Our text today from the Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 16. In Jesus' name, Amen. Many of the Gospel readings for the past two months have led us to take a good, hard look at Jesus. These lessons from Matthew have led us to see who Jesus is, who He really is, true God and true man, the one and only Messiah. These readings have also helped us to see more clearly the mission and ministry of that Messiah. And I believe the same is true in today's Gospel. In the Gospel reading for today, and as it continues next Sunday, Jesus is once again reminding His disciples of who He is and what He came to do. He begins by asking them about the general public opinion of Him. From their answers, we see that many people had some kind of respect for Jesus, They thought he was possibly one of the great prophets resurrected from the dead. All three of the prophets that are named had strong messages about the Messiah. But even with this high opinion, most people seem to consider Jesus to be just a forerunner of the Messiah, much like John the Baptizer. When you think of it, not that much has changed today. Many people in our day would agree that Jesus was a great teacher, maybe even a prophet announcing God's Word. But that's as far as many of them go. Unfortunately for them, that belief is not nearly enough. Then Jesus asked for the disciples' own response. But you, who do you say I am? Peter speaks up quickly. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Some people think Peter is the first disciple to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. But his brother Andrew already believed that Jesus was the Messiah when Andrew invited Peter to come and meet Jesus. That's in John chapter 1. And others of the disciples had already voiced their belief in Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ. Peter is not the only one to believe. Peter is not the first to believe. Peter is merely the spokesman for the group, voicing the belief that they all share and have shared for quite some time. They may not have known exactly what it really meant, but they did believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus' reply shows that he accepts Peter's confession as true. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus goes on to tell them more about his mission. First, he says that Simon is blessed. In other words, he has a treasure in his soul, the eternal treasure of faith given to him by God the Father. This blessing belongs to the other disciples too and to all who have faith in Jesus. Jesus reminds them that faith in him does not result from our own wisdom or emotion nor from any part of our human nature of flesh and blood. Faith is always a gift from God. That gift comes to us according to God's specific plan of revelation. God revealed the identity of His Son to these disciples, first of all through the Old Testament Scriptures, and then through the life and ministry of Jesus Himself. That gift of faith comes to us today as God still follows His specific plan of revelation. As we read of His plan of salvation in the Old Testament Scriptures, and as we see the fulfillment of that plan in the life and ministry of the Christ in the New Testament. That leads us to the verse about the rock. Jesus says, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. As you probably know, some parts of the Christian church believe that the rock is Peter himself. After all, his name in Greek, Petrus, means rock. For this reason they say Peter as the foremost leader of the church, calling him the first pope. However, we don't agree with that view. Nowhere else in the New Testament is Peter ever called the head of the church. When the disciples argue about who is the chief, Jesus tells them, it is not to be that way among you. As we see a list of Peter's actions, even as we're going to hear in next Sunday's Gospel reading, right after this, we see Peter not being very rock-like. 
but often changeable and even sinful in his nature. In Ephesians, we read that all of the apostles, as well as all of the Old Testament prophets, are the foundation of the church. In other words, the writings and teachings that they passed on to us are the foundation, with Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone, what ties it all together. Peter is not the rock on which Christ will build his church. It becomes even clearer in the Greek words. Petros, Peter's name in Greek, usually means a single rock or a detached boulder, which we got plenty of around here, right? Or even a small stone, Petros. Petra, which many of you may have seen a name of a place in Jordan where there's these stone walls and you go through a little canyon to find this city built in the, in the cliffs that are there. Petra is the word Jesus uses for rock in the second part of the sentence. It means a rocky cliff or a ridge or even a rocky mountain or that underlying continuous bedrock. Very strong. A single normal human individual doesn't fit that picture very well. Very often the rest of the Christian church has said that the rock is not Peter himself, but the confession that Peter makes. The words he speaks, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's a better understanding. The church is based on the confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I say it's a better understanding. I think there's still a little bit short of the best understanding of the rock. Our confession of faith, our confession, is not really the church's foundation. Instead, our confession is a result of the foundation. I think if you go to that verse from Ephesians, the foundation and bedrock of our faith is God's revelation to us. It's the Word of God that reveals Jesus to us, and we know that as John calls Jesus the Word over and over again, the foundation and bedrock of our faith really is Jesus Christ Himself. In Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, this same Simon Peter doesn't talk about himself as the rock on which the church is built. He speaks only of Jesus Christ as the living stone chosen by God and precious to God upon which the church is built. Peter speaks of the believers, and that includes himself, as living stones being built together into a spiritual house or temple because of being connected to the foundation, which is Jesus the living, the living stone. Well, taking all this into account, I think we could understand Jesus' words this way. You are Peter, Petrus, a little piece of the rock, and then picture, in my mind, I picture Jesus kind of pointing to himself and saying, and on this rock, on this Petra, I will build my church. On me as the only true God and true man, as me as the Savior of the world, on this eternal bedrock and solid mountain, I build my church. And the gates of Hades, the gates of death, will not prevail against it. This is a rock that does not change. This is a rock that's not affected by my emotional ups and downs. This foundation of faith is not my private possession given by God to me alone. This is God's gift of revelation to all. From Genesis to St. John's revelation in chapter 22, it's God's Word revealing Jesus Christ to us. This is God's chosen way of telling us about His plan of salvation. From Genesis to Revelation, as we've said uh, for several years with the theme for the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, it's still all about Jesus. Genesis to Revelation, it's about Christ, the Son of the living God. That revelation doesn't change. Your and my understanding of it may grow and deepen as days go by, but we must not add anything to the message or delete anything from it. Christians at times may disagree about what parts of it mean, but we dare not give any other words the authority of God's Word, nor any other person 
the authority of the Christ. But what a rock this is. Jesus, this rock is the Christ, the one who promised to build his church, the one who promised to build it so strong that the powers of death cannot defeat it. This rock gives to the church the keys of the kingdom of heaven, we hear in the reading today. Keys that open heaven for sinners who, trusting in this rock, repent of their sins. Keys that close heaven against those who trust themselves or any other power or any other rock. This bedrock of faith is the Lord Jesus Himself. As Paul says in Romans 11, He is the one who made all things, and to Him all things belong. As he told his people long ago, I am the Lord. I will bring you out of slavery. I will free you. I will redeem you. I will take you as my own people. I will be your God. This saving word, this victorious Christ, this loving God is that bedrock of our faith. Thanks be to God for such a solid rock. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in this Christ Jesus. Amen.